Hallelujah. Are you glad that the Father's arms are open wide? Hallelujah. Put your hands together and give him a good praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to all of our viewers. We greet you today in Jesus' name. We're glad you tuned in to this hour from Dove Christian Center Church or Dove Church. And we're just glad you're here. We invite your responses to this time that you see us, this time of ministry. But for right now, we're going to do as we normally do. We raise our Bible up and say together, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word. We honor you and we bless you today. And we declare that there is none like you. And so today, bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Minister to their hearts. Beat back all fear and darkness. We thank you that you are releasing healing virtue over not only Detroit and Michigan, but this entire nation and world. Heal the sick. We thank you for the victory that we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. We're going to talk from the subject today, prescription for fear, prescription for fear, prescription for fear. And I'm going to start this teaching session off with a question. Is fear bullying you? We know what bullies do and we know how they operate. But we want to find out, is fear bullying you? The Bible is the prescription for fear. Think about this. When people are sick, they seek a doctor because they believe the medication he or she prescribes will make them well. needed to change mics. We are currently awaiting a vaccine for COVID-19 to finally be approved for distribution to the arrest of this dreaded disease and virus. But we should have even more confidence in the Bible. God's word is his written prescription for his children to not only be well, but to do well in him. Here is one of the total man prescription scriptures that I like. 
and I use quite often. It's from 3 John 2. Have your Bibles or whatever you can turn to it, find it quickly. 3 John 2. When you have it, say amen. It says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health. It doesn't say good health. And many people read this and add good health, but health is good. Be in health, but he not only wants your physical body to be in health, just as your soul prospers. He wants your total being to prosper. The main benefit of obedience to his word is that you come to know his character better day by day. When we start understanding God's character, we start to see and know his will for us because his will is displayed in how his character is affected toward us. One of the main areas in which God's children need his prescription is in the area of fear. The enemy uses fear to bully many of God's children, and I mean he's bullying them all over the place. But we have selected fear. We fear church, but we don't fear work. We got selected fear. We don't fear the, the groups of our friends, but we fear church. We've got selected fear. So fear is bullying you into thinking it's a situational thing, and it's not about a situation. It's about trusting God in every situation. Yes. The enemy knows that God loves you. Let's be clear about that. The devil knows how much God loves you, that he will send his only son after you. Now, angels fell before you came on the scene, but he didn't send his son after an angel. He sent them after you. So he knows that God loves you. And this same God that loves you wants to protect you too. Say amen, somebody. So spiritually, Satan is trying to block you from receiving God's blessing for your life. The enemy, metaphorically speaking, wants you to think, if you want to get to God's blessing, you've got to get past me. So he has you think that I must go through hell and high water before God can really bless me. I got to go through the devil so I can get blessed by God. It's a lie. And it's a trick. Now him knowing that you're about to be blessed, he's going to come in and try to stop it. Because again, let me repeat myself, the enemy knows that God loves you. Amen? He knows that. Don't play a game with that. That's why he tries to throw everything in your way to stop you, to block you, because he knows how much God loves you. That God would give the only of anything that he has for you means that he loves you highly. You are the apple of his eye. Amen? He loves you. If you start constantly thinking this way, you will be fearful that each time you are close to a blessing, you will have to fight for it. That's a trick of the enemy. Some people would rather not have to deal out with fighting over anything, so they just, just remain in the mindset of fear. I won't try it because I'm going to get turned down. I won't create it because no he's going to accept it. So it shuts you down in areas of creativity and, and, and job search. Whatever. I don't qualify, so I won't apply for it. I don't think I can do it in spite of seeing other people do it, so I won't do it. It's fear. And, and cripples. Fear stymies and fear shuts you down. If you've ever gotten up, if you've ever been afraid to speak, and trust me, anytime I get up, I, I, I do it afraid because when I first get up, the first thing I say to 
Don't say, oh, God. The enemy shows up and says, this is the day you're going to fall flat on your face. And after I get myself together, I said, well, I got everything to gain. Here goes. Joyce Meyer said something, and it's one of my, my, my favorite statements from her. She said, when you're approaching something and, and it seems like the enemy doesn't want you to do it, she said, do it afraid. Yeah. Fearful. Yeah. Apply for the job fearful. Yeah. Do it afraid. Yeah. Go for that extra contract. Get the extra work. Do it afraid. Amen. But you'll have the resolve in your spirit that you tried to do it. Trusting God. Sometimes we rehearse a no before we get it. They're going to say no. They're not going to like me. And that might be true, but so, if they don't like you. Somebody don't like somebody somewhere all the time. Am I right? How many, anybody in this room that everybody likes? Wow. How does fear mask itself? Mask itself as anxiety, worry, apprehension. That means you're tentative about everything. Apprehension. Or concern. But these are fear-based emotions. Anxiety, worry, and apprehension. Fear-based emotions. The cause of fear, let's, let's get to the root of some things, is found in, in this definition. An emotion experienced in anticipation of pain or danger. An emotion experienced in anticipation. In anticipation, pain and danger. The operative word here is anticipation. The enemy tries to get you to imagine the worst possible outcome. Am I right? You hear a diagnosis from the doctor and you go to the worst outcome. Let me be clear about even COVID. The death toll is, is mind-blowing at this time. Above 250 5,000 people across this country. But the truth is, more than that are surviving COVID and living. While many people get tested, everybody is not going to die of it. Let's be clear. Amen? So sometimes when you think COVID, the first place we think of you already on the deathbed. And sometimes when fear shows up, you're already playing out the worst scenario. Some people, you can't tell that they have something or you got something because they tell you everybody they know they had that and then died with it. And you should practice if that's something that you kind of get into the operation of not saying that because your faith-filled words are things. Your words are things and they deliver something. So if you're a faith person and a person of faith, you should speak faith. Okay, that's what we say, but I got a picture from Scripture that shows me something else. It's a prescription for healing. Oh, uh, yeah, this woman in the, uh, that had an issue of blood, she was healed. Yeah, you need to go to a different story. Find you a story that's positive. Amen? Again, God's word is the prescription. And, and here is another of my go-to prescriptions. It's from 1 John 4.18. It says, and, and this is true, Let's, let the Bible speak. That is true. 
This is what the word of God says. There is no fear in love. But perfect love cast out fear. Because fear has torment. Involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Wow. What do you say if I'm operating in fear, I haven't been perfected, or mean I haven't matured in the things of God? Yes. There it is. It's in your face. It's in your face. Yeah, I said it today. You haven't matured in love. Now I'm going to do something amazing here. I'm going to tell you, let me restate this verse and insert God where the word love is. There is no fear in God. But our perfect God throws out fear. Because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made mature in God. There's the restatement. Grow up in God. It's time to grow up in God. It's time to stop talking it. See, you don't know your faith will work until it's put to a test. You don't know that you've forgiven somebody until it doesn't bother you anymore. I'm not saying the scar is gone. I'm saying it doesn't bother you anymore. I fell down and bust my knee as a child, and, and, and the scar is still there. But unless I, I'm, I'm bathing or look at it, I never notice it anymore because it doesn't hurt anymore. Are you out there? Grow up. Everybody say grow up. grow up. Mature in God. The fact that you have grown up in God means you should be able to see, recognize, and handle fear. When you grow up, you can see, recognize, and handle fear. First of all, you know where it came from. You know that it's not of God. You know that it's not God's plan for you. Is not in his will for you. There is no fear in God. The reason why I said put God in there. Because later I'm going to read God is love. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in God. We also read in this verse that fear involves torment. Which according to the dictionary means severe, physical, or mental suffering. So when fear comes in, it torments you. Its aim is to lock you away inside of yourself. So you will not come out. I got news for you. The devil will go into where you are locked into. Whew. My God. God does not want his children. Do I need to get that definition again? Means severe physical and mental suffering. Torment. God does not want his children to live in torment, victims of the enemy's bullying. 1 John 3 and 8. Find that. 1 John 3 and 8. And let's be clear. This opening phrase is clear. It says, he who sins is of the devil. Amen. Amen. Because let's, let, let me explain how long the devil been sinning from the beginning. For this purpose, because the devil ushered in sin, he said for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. And the word manifested means appeared. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Sin is the works of the devil. Jesus came to destroy the 
Destroy what? The works of who? So sin is what? It's the work of the devil. Is fear sin? It's the work of the devil. And what you entertain will detain you. Job said it this way. The thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. And you have to be careful. Jesus came to set us free and destroy the works of the devil. One of the works of the devil, again, is fear. But here is the prescription for it. 1 John 4, 7, and 8. Here's another prescription. Notice all the prescriptions are the word of God. It said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Amen. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And everyone that is born knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. When you're unloving, you don't know God. Because if you're tied to God, you're tied to everything that God has made available to you. So if you're in love, you're in love with what God says. And if you're in God and God is love, it says Perfect love cast out fear. So God gets rid of fear. All you have to do is submit it to God and he'll get rid of it. But you'd rather cower inside or cower away and as if God is not able. He's the one that's able to wake you up, start you on your way. If he's still able to do that, he's able to handle everything else. Here are three additional scripture prescriptions. You need to memorize these and meditate on them when you are afraid. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand. Notice that he's doing all the heavy lifting. I, 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 I am with you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you. You don't have to do any of it. Only thing you have to do is trust him. Did you get that? Then the next one, Joshua 1 and 9. Joshua 1 and 9. And it says this. Have I not commanded you? It's a commandment to trust God. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Everybody say that. Nor dismay. For the Lord, who's God? Your God is with you. And where is he with you? Well, if he said he's with you wherever you go, why are you afraid? He's commanding you to trust him. It's a commandment. Deuteronomy 31 and 8. And the Lord, he is the one that goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. And when I, when I read this just now, the Lord sent back into my spirit. I had talked to my sister, Lindy, who had COVID. She's now testing negative, but she was in intensive care for one month 
and rehab for two weeks. And she just plainly told me, I've been through hell. She said, it's no joke, it's for real. But she said, God is real too. She shared with me that when she first started showing symptoms, she had gone to, the, to, the, to one of the satellite clinics and they gave her an option of staying or leaving. And she said, because of fear, she said, I want to go home. And she said, she said, my nickname is Bridie. She said, it was not a good decision. She said, because I was afraid. The fear had tormented her because she didn't want to go to an uh, inner city hospital that, that was the main hub here in Detroit because she just heard so many horror stories. So she, she was afraid. So she prolonged something where she should have gotten treatment earlier. And she wouldn't admit this to me before, but now she will. She said, she said I was so afraid till I made the wrong decision. And then I finally had to go in because there was nothing else to do. And I'm telling somebody, fear will make you make bogus decisions about serious issues in your life. Fear will. Because you started playing that movie over and over in your head, this is going to happen to me. No, have I commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismay, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Come on. Are we going to believe the word or are we going to believe the lie? Which one is it? Never forget the story about Paul being in prison and how when they loosed him, they commanded him, don't preach this anymore. He went to the company of his people and, 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 and they were praying for him that, that, that he would go forth with more power and he went out and continued to preach in Jesus' name in the face of threatening death and, and, and being burned and being bored and all. He didn't care. He said, he, he kept on doing. He, and you know what they prayed for? Them rascals didn't pray. Lord, help me hide out. Help me get into my bedroom. Help me stay into my house. Help me stay hiding out. He said, give me boldness. Help me do it better than I did it before. Just as bold. And it, it was in those days, it was illegal to be a Christian. Now, the illegal Christians were praying for boldness. And in, in 2020, the legal Christians are hiding out. Whew. Whew. Somebody said, well, I have to be safe. Yes, be safe. Wear a mask. Social distance. But trust God. Faith isn't foolishness. The next thing it says, in addition, the Lord tells his people not be dismayed. The word origin of dismay means I am not able. Don't be dismayed. And, and dismay means I am not able. I am not able. When you get dismayed, I'm not able to stay. I'm not at the handle. How I many of you know this year you've handled more than you thought you'd handle? And you're still here. However, during these times, you need to remind yourself that the Lord is with you and he is able. It's not your ability, but your trust in his ability. Here is what you must 
must do. Decide to cast out fear. Refuse to anticipate pain and danger in your imagination. Your fear begins in your imagination. Some of you are singing, I can only imagine, but you're not talking about heaven. Fear is in your imagination. But 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 tells you what to do with that fear. It says, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself. Now this is New King James Version. Against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Well, the message plainly lays it out this way. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing or for manipulation. But they are for demolishing that entire massively corrupt culture. We use our powerful God tools for, mass, for smashing warped philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting Fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of the shape by Christ. Fitting. Shape of Christ. Fitting into the shape of Christ. According to scripture, you can take the self-defeating thoughts... The enemy has planted in your mind captive. You don't let them run rampant. Here's a few key thoughts. Remember, the Lord has already been where you are going. The Bible says he was at all points tempted. Like as we are, but without sin. The Lord is always there to strengthen you. Remember that. And the third thing is where we need to lodge. The Lord is there to give you wisdom when you don't know what to do. He only asks that you ask him for wisdom, according to James 1 and 5. If you ask him for wisdom, he will give it to you. And when you don't know what to do, ask the Lord, say, give me wisdom. Tell me what to do and how to do it. Not my thinking, because the wisdom of God will blow your thinking out. And you'll say, God, God, where did that come from? I never thought of that. Or he'll send somebody that's wise that you can talk to. When you don't know what to do, don't you do anything. Ask for wisdom. I know that's oxymoron. I just say, don't, don't you do anything. Then I told you to ask for wisdom. That's doing something. When I say don't do anything, don't do something unwise. Pray for wisdom. How many of you are better off because you stopped and, 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 and received wise counsel or you prayed for wisdom? God, how many of you got a jerk from the Holy Spirit to say don't do this? Something just happened at the beginning of this service. I was about to do something else, and the Holy Spirit said, no, because I asked the question. He said, ask him this question. I said, wow, Holy Spirit, you just stood up with me right here at this back door. He said, ask him this question. And I asked the question, and he couldn't come out with the right answer for me. Then he thought of something to say that would pull my emotion. And the Holy Spirit tugged me again. And I say, no, I don't do that. But if there's another way I can help you, come see me right after service. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Meditate on these scriptures day and night. And as I come to a close, Romans 8.37 says, 
Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And you need to write this down. We don't fight for victory, but from victory. We don't fight for victory, but from victory. We fight from the position that we are already victors. <laughs> Did, oh, oh, they woke up, the light came on. Say, say that again. See, see, we don't fight for victory, but from victory. We're already more than conquerors. So we fight from the conqueror's position. Taking territory. Moving out. Getting more. I'm already a victor because I'm in Christ and I'm in love. I love God. God loves me. I know it. So because of all those things I knew, no, based on the word of God, I fight from victory. Blessings to you today. Amen. If you heard our message today and the Lord spoke to your heart, we're inviting you to a special call. And this call is to make Jesus the Lord of your life. He loves you. But before Jesus loved you, God did. And the Bible said God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's a mighty promise. It's a mighty sweep. Your confession of the Lord Jesus Christ sweeps you out of the world of darkness into the world of light. Into the kingdom of light. It's available to you today. And what I'm inviting you to do is say this statement after me. It's a confession of Jesus Christ. Just repeat it after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I surrender my life to you. I believe today that you are Lord to the glory of God. I believe today in a miracle that one day you died on a cross and that third day morning you were raised from the dead to the glory of God and on that confession I am saved so thank you Jesus for saving me today God bless you if you prayed that prayer you are in the kingdom right now you need to connect with a good Bible teaching church that teaches you the clear word of God shows it to you, directs you shows you his love through his word God has a prescription for you and he has a prescription for fear perfect love cast out all fear know that today bless you we'll, we'll see you again soon Amen. God bless you. Give the Lord a good. Praise the Lord again. To all of our listeners, we thank God for you. We encourage your financial support of this ministry. Dove Church is good ground. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website at Dove Church slash giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.